Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to an absolutely glorious day just the top side of uh, Lincoln. We're out with the Sumo Boys today. We're out on a, on a farm demonstration, uh, courtesy of Ripon Farm Services. And from the dealership, we've got Mr. Matt Smith, who basically is going to explain what's going on today, Matt. So, I mean, Matt, hit me with it. What, where are we at? What's going on? So we're at Leven Leverton Farms, just sort of south side of Hemswell. We've brought a couple of bits of kit, so we've brought a couple of tractors ourselves. The customer's also got their own machine that we're having to go with, and just putting everything through its paces to see if it meets the customer's needs. Well, what machines have we got today, particularly the Sumo stuff for so a start? Sumo side, we've got the six metre mixy disc, so we're going to couple that up to our 7R. And then we've also brought an LDS and a DTS, both in three metres, which we're just trying today. We're not putting any seed into the ground, we're yeah. just giving it a go to see how the sort of the stubble and the trash pass through the machines. That's it. Well, I mean, just explain the stubble and the trash because it's, uh, it's a bit sticky on yeah, the top. Yeah, it's quite it's, wet. So we're on some of the customers' drier land as such. We've had about half an inch of rain over the weekend, so it's made it quite tacky. Yeah. But it is quite free draining with it being on the cliff. Right. But we're in sort of medium length stubble it's not too bad yeah. and they're looking to do a bit more direct work as opposed to regular cultivations right got these so a bit of a change of regime really yeah and we've got a fair bit of sort of organic manure to sort of incorporate into the ground and bits and yeah. pieces like that so there is we're quite we're wanting to get the mix and action of the mixy disc but also the low disturbance of the, the subsoiler and the the dts as well so they've sort of said what bits of kit they've got and what they've used in the past and what they've liked and not liked about them yeah. And then we've came up with the sort of machinery that they want to bring, so the three bits of kit that we've got here today. And yeah, we'll just sort of have a go and see how it compares. The customer's already had a go with another manufacturer's brand, and we'll run up the side of that and see sort of what comparisons we That's get. That's it, it's literally a true comparison yeah. for the customer. Yeah, so That's it's... It. Well, Matt, I'll let you crack on, and no uh, yeah, we'll see how this, uh, how this demo goes. Good stuff, cheers. Perfect. gentlemen on with our uh, on with our demo day and i'm now joined by mr philip stevenson from Morning. sumo who's gonna well you're gonna talk us through the machines that you brought with you today yeah so we've got three different machines here we've bought the lds3 which is our, our three meter low disturbance subsoiler 50 uh, centimeter leg spacing designed to work down to somewhere 14 inches if you wanted to work that deep but principally shallow low disturbance yeah. cultivation really um, then we've got the Mixi Disc X6, which is our 6 metre disc cultivator with uh, disc levelling board and press configuration, and then the DTS3, our 3 metre um, deep tine seeder. That's it, the seeder. famous DTS. Yes, yeah, one of many, a lot of them about. So that's it, so I mean, yeah. obviously you're here to impress a customer today, that's, that's the top and bottom of it. We'll just kind of sort of like explain now like the sort of reasons you brought this, these three machines with you, sort of like what's the customer sort of after? Well, the, the farm uh, that's invited has come out, they're looking at a slight change to their system. So they're looking at going in, doing minimal surface disturbance initially with the LDS type subsoiler. And then they're incorporating farmyard manure, uh, chicken manure. So they want to do um, a sort of top mix of, of soil and manure, but they also want a machine that can be dual purpose and do low, a low amount, low depth cultivation where they're going to move enough of the surface to enable the green chit to get the volunteers going, get the black grass going um, and just start that cultivation process ahead of the next phase of the following cultivation pass or the drill. That's it. So, and then with the DTS obviously that gives them the option that they, if they want to work into that mixy disc um, cultivation system then the, the DTS can go in and work into that well, can work into the LDS surface well or can actually go straight into the ground in the right conditions and direct drill. So what's kind of uh, involved today then? So, uh, so we're, we're how working do you go about the... showing these machines <laughs> off? Where do you even start? Well, we're, we're fortunate that um, we're, you know, we're working with, uh, with Ripon Farm Services, who are, are one of our dealers that look after the farm over in this area. So they've supplied two of the tractors and the farm put their own, which is uh, Massey Ferguson on. Um, so we've brought the machines out. Um, the LDS had been into work before, so it was just a case of fitting that to the tractor, getting everything set up, agreeing what depth the customer wanted to work to, and actually just understanding what they're hoping to see the machine do, what they want to achieve from the work yeah. with the machine. So, so we're working that down to about eight, eight to ten inches uh, as a variable. Um, we've got the flat type packer on there as well, so it's leaving a very good level consolidated finish on there as well. Um, conditions are on the cusp of being about right. We, we had some rain last night, 
um, which Just has dampened the top down. Yeah, you've got to have a bit of clack. <laughs> thing is you've got to see where the tyres have been but actually when you look at what it's doing um, the machine works the, the configuration you've got the leading disc which is cutting the slot for the leg to work into um, and we're not getting any great amount of soil disturbance of anything so when you dig down into the profile of the soil um, you can see what the the, the low disturbance points doing it's getting an element of up, 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 uh, uplift into the uh, the profile area that the legs working when you dig in between where the legs are, um, you know it's moved, but it's not raving everything up. So it's doing what it wants to do, working from the point upwards as opposed from the top downwards at some cultivation. That's speed. it. You just want that nice heave, that just, nice just lift. Just start the process. Get to, get a bit of a channel for the water to get through the air to get into the soil, and just start to permeate that uh, compaction layer so that everything can do what it's supposed to do afterwards. Yeah, I suppose really, I mean, with conditions as it is today, just, you know, on the sticky side on the top, yes. it must be quite good to sort of show off in those conditions. Yeah. Because anyone can show off in ideal good going conditions. It, it's, I mean, I've been, been in the machinery side from both operator and, and sales and demonstration several years now, and I always tell the customer, anybody that's looking at a machine that you want to try it in ideal conditions but you also want to put it in the worst case scenario that you're going to use it in so if you've got an opportunity this time of year to come and see the machine working as it is now um, it, it equally as important as bring it into perfect post harvest conditions where you get straight behind a combine um, and also sometimes if you get the chance to put a competitor's machine at the side of it in the same field of conditions that's always good fun it's, it? it's always good to see what everybody <laughs> else does as well yeah yeah well, Philip, thank you very much for that. I'll well, let yeah. you crack on with the demonstration. <laughs> You'll find see. some sunshine. That's again, it. Right? I know. It, we, we set off and it was glorious sunshine. Now, look at it. We're absolutely... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all got a bit brass monkey. That's it. But anyway, right. We'll crack on and we'll see what else we can do. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank Philip. You. Philip, uh, towards the end of the demo day now, it's certainly got a little bit cooler up here on this hill. It's, it's freshened up on the top, yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I mean, how's it gone today really? It's gone very well. All the machines have worked well. It's interesting, as we said earlier, that the conditions, we had some rain overnight and it's just dampened things down, but actually things have gone well. So where we've been with the LDS particularly, um, the rollers left a very good finish. The, the, the farmer was very impressed in how that uh, left things. Um, the DTS has gone exceptionally well. Um, yeah. Really pleased. And actually, yeah, if we were drilling today, that would have been some good drilling that we'd have done. That's it. And we tried um, it in, you know, in strength of stubble, and we tried it behind the LDS yeah, as well. Actually, which... it, it is interesting where we've been behind the LDS that um, it, it worked really well. So yeah. Uh, yeah, left a very good finish on there. Um, Mixy disc has gone uh, as performed. You know, as we expected, it's it's not really a disking day, but no, actually, it's just tacky on top. Isn't yeah, it's that just little picked bit up of... a little bit. So we've not used the levelling board a lot, but the roller, where you look, what what the multi pack has done behind, um, it's left a very good finish that you can yeah. actually go and work into. I mean, the way this wind's blowing, it's drying out all the time. So That's if anybody it. wanted to come and drill into the top of that today, they could do. You know, it's it's a heavy packer, but actually, what it what it does when you see how it works. I mean, the multi packer wants to be sort of eight to ten centimeters of friable soil anyway, yeah. um, to be able to do its job, which it's got today. But it's just a bit more plasticine than uh, than dusty. So that's it. Yeah, yeah it Aye, not a lot of dust about today. And there isn't. No. no. <laughs> uh, I noticed before as well. You were kind of going on a slight with with the uh, with the DTS mm. uh, behind the LDS. You're going on a slight angle like that. What's kind of what's your sort of reasons for that? Uh, just to work in a different profile, really. So the risk is, of course, if you're following directly behind where you've been, that you could end up with a cult of following the LDS leg, where you're just going to get a different seed placement. Yeah. Um, and just different drilling into. So, although in theory you're disturbing slightly more surface area, you're actually drilling into fresh ground all the time when you're when you drilling in at an angle with it. So, it was the customer's preference as well. So, on their system they use at the moment, that's how they would drill. Okay. So, we're just simulating yeah. what they would do in a normal time. I suppose you'll get a more even seed placement doing it that way as well, well you, you? do, because you're, you're not sort of following that deep line that's been cut by the LDS. So, yeah. um, so it keeps everything kind of constant. And then I suppose the uh, the crucial bit really today. I mean, what was the what was the customers' feedback and the agronomists as well? Because you had a fair crowd at one point. We, we did. You we had an audience, been, uh, didn't you? It's been a yeah, it's been a good demo day. So very positive. I mean, interesting conversations, comparing what they've 
already got on the farm and other machines have looked at. Um, interesting to discuss what um, you know what they're wanting to achieve. So from what they've seen from the machines, every machine that we've bought would actually do the job that they wanted it to do. Yeah. Um, and interesting with the farm because they've got some varying soil types. I mean, we're on the Lincolnshire limestone up here. Um, they've got some very heavy blue clays as well, but they could adapt the machines to do what they want to do on, on all aspects of the farm. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's been a very, very good and very positive. Day. And did they sort of like throw any particular, or did any sort of like particular challenges for them come to light to you today? Um, not, not really. The, I think one of the concerns, uh, as we often find with the direct drill, the DTS system, is the, uh, the seed row spacing. But because we can utilise a different sowing boot on the coulter, mm. like a coulter boot, um, we can actually split the seed into two lines. So we can limit the, the dead space between rows of uh, establishment. Yeah. Um, so, of course, that's limiting the exposure for blackgrass and, and, and other sort of problematic weeds coming through. So we were able to offer them the solution to that with having a, a twin sowing coulter on there um, and that should eliminate any concerns that they have and interestingly for one of the drills that they have on the farm at the moment that works on a similar principle um, has proved that actually that system with having that wider spacing between each leg isn't as much of a problem as they first thought. So, oh, okay. Um, oh. But other than that, no, everything we've been able to sort of quantify talking about different rollers for the LDS and, and for the uh, for the mixy disc, um, different options as well for the, the feet, what we can do, or the versatility of being able to put a, a trio type leg into the LDS as well, if they wanted to do more soil disturbance than, than it's designed to do with the LDS leg. Um, we, we can cover most things. So. Okay, yeah. and then just, sorry, just quickly going back to the to the DTS and yep. being able to change the to change the cultures and the shares on it. Um, what sort of, what kind of situations would kind of dictate which sort of culture or share would you use? Well, so generally, if you were using for sort of deeper sowing with beans, you tend to go with the uh, the, the single out culture mm. um, because you're you're going to drill deeper, so that would give you less soil disturbance, um, and you're only sowing in one band. So, particularly one of the questions I asked actually was about sowing cover crops and putting small seeds where you want to rather than sow the seed into the ground you want to broadcast it in effect on the top but give a little bit of soil disturbance so the benefit of that of having the, the the wider boot on there that you're actually getting a bit of a fan spread onto the soil but getting enough soil contact on top of that yeah. seed as well to, uh, to you know to help with the establishment so it's uh, you, you tend to probably use the 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 the, the the dual coulter, um, the wider coulter for cereals where you just want, you know, the, the different row, different establishment rates, different seed types. Okay, and can you put fertiliser down with that as well if, if need be? Uh, with, with the with the DTS3 we've got here, the mounted one, you, isn't a seed fert option than that. If you go to the trailed system we can split the tank so you can do seed fert applications. The way around doing it with the DTS is to have a front mounted hopper, um, but then you'd have to have a different distribution system on for the, yeah. for the foot. So it can be done, it's not as straightforward, but it can be done. And in terms of trends, because they're always shifting about <laughs> constantly, I mean, it's particularly like OSR establishing things like that, because you've got a DTS over there where you can take every other leg and every other culture out, yep. but then you've got this as well. So does well, this give it. them a a few more further options to play it with. It does, I mean on the back of this we've got the uh, the single disc opens, our SDO system which we're working with the stock seeder on there which we you know we, we supply and fit. Um, it does give versatility so if you wanted to to band so or seed rate particularly behind the leg, the leg space in 50 centimetres is, is about where people are generally for rate when they're using this type of system. Um, it, it gives a bit more versatility and options to what you're doing. So when you're investing in a machine, actually you're investing into a system that can do more than one thing, mm. which of course everybody wants to save money where they can and minimise passes and, and just make the whole system more economical, more justifiable with cost because the cost of everything is going yeah. up. So. Especially in this day. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Philip, thank you very much for your time. Uh, no, thank once you. again, it's been a cracking day. It's been a good insight into what you guys get up to in terms of a demo day and you know just uh, you know dealing with the people and the customers and their challenges and their expectations really. Well, that's it and everything we do is, is sort of focused on what the, the customer wants and expects. So the opportunity to get out in the field and 
it's not every day we get the chance to come and do a demo and bring three different machines out and, and have a day doing it, but it, it's all good experience for us because we get the direct feedback of, of what the, the, the farmers are looking at uh, when they're looking at cultivation equipment. So, um, yeah, it's always good to be out there. Exactly, and now what's next? Uh, we've got to chase those hot leads now, is it? <laughs> That's, yeah, there'll be some phone calls to the dealer in the morning and get them uh, chasing around and uh, see where we get to. Okay, Philip, thanks again. No, it's been thank an absolute you. spot on that. Cheers. Thank you.